Good day to you, YouTube. Here we go with another video. We've got you uh, some tips and some tricks to help you increase your sales on eBay. Some of these ideas may seem a bit obvious, but it's the obvious stuff that sometimes we forget because it seems so familiar. Now, maybe you're full-time, maybe you're part-time, maybe you do it as a hobby, but nobody wants stuff that sits around and doesn't sell. Number one is better brands better condition. So often I see people try to make their eBay business run on $7 uh, St. John's Bay sweaters that they try to sell for 15 and look if that's what you got that's what you got but you're not going to build a qu uh, quickly growing and very profitable business with that model. You have to buy better brands. Brands that have more appeal, more uh, initial value, more popularity. You also have to buy better condition. You can't buy something in a poor condition and expect to sell it for a lot no matter what the brand is. Now there are some brands that no matter what the condition is because of the quality and the type of item it may be the condition doesn't determine whether or not it's going to sell or not. Maybe affect the price but it will still sell and that's cool too but those are few and far between. And to make things a little simpler I've made a list and put it in the description of about 10 brands that I like right now and 10 brands that I don't like right now for reselling. So make sure that when you're buying it, you're checking every element, shoes, you're bending to see if the sole is falling apart, uh, look for holes, stains, rips, stuff like that. And I would do all of that before you check out at the thrift store or check out at the flea market because once you buy it, most of these places won't let you return it. That might mean when you go to a thrift store, you don't buy anything or you buy one thing. Number two is use eBay's promoted listings. Now when promoted listings came out, the eBay community flipped out. I flipped out. I didn't really like the idea. Of course, you kind of have to get used to whatever eBay's gonna do unless you wanna find another platform as big as eBay and you're not probably going to do that. Now that doesn't mean you go on and say, all right, I get 20% of my sale price and get to the top. Be logical about it. If you're selling an item with lots of competition, you might want to bump up the amount you allot to promoted listings. Maybe you go to 10% because you want to try to get to the top of those search results. You can't be at the bottom of the list. People will not make it there. So make sure that you pay a little bit more just to get to the top because yes, you'll pay 3% more, but you'll actually get a sale and you won't be sitting on product forever and ever and ever. The third way to increase your sales is your listing. Uh, I see lots of titles on eBay and they either are five words or they're full of all kinds of random uh, acronyms and letters and and you know uh, free shipping and uh, fast handling and all that stuff. Your listing is the most important thing after the product itself because your listing is the representation of the product you have. If you have a good product and a bad listing, you might as well have a bad product because no one's gonna buy it. So make sure your titles are clear, concise, all the good keywords. Now what are good keywords? If you're selling a pair of shoes, you want to describe, is it leather? Is What color is it? Is it a men's shoe? Is it a women's shoe? Does it have a model number or a model name? What size is it? All of those things will help your buyer who's looking for a particular type of shoe find your listing. If you have a listing that has only five words like men's dress shoe, Allen Edmonds. That's only like three or four key words that actually help the buyer find your shoe. And if everybody else has those four key words, you're gonna be the last of the list because they probably are gonna add something else like the size or the color or the style of the shoe they're looking for. So you need to make sure that you know your product well enough to put that information in your title. So last few years, eBay has put a lot more emphasis on the data entry that you're putting in your listing. So there's all kinds of information like is it vintage, is it uh, this style or that style, like with t-shirts, is it collared, is it crew neck, is it v-neck? You can put all that information in now and that actually helps inform search results to make sure that the buyer can find exactly what they need as fast as possible. Number four is returns. And I know people are gonna get bugged by this because everybody has their opinion on returns. I'm just gonna give you my opinion. We started offering returns after uh, eBay started to incentivize it. It made sense, we didn't get a ton of returns. Um, and most of the times if the returns are for like do not fit or whatever, like 
we can resell it again and make our money back. What we were finding was, because eBay is going to force the return if the item is not as it's described or if it gets lost or whatever, it was just easier for us to go ahead and accept returns. This doesn't mean I endorse free returns wholeheartedly, even though I think there is a pretty significant trade-off that financially make, make more sense. And here's what I mean. You can offer free returns, but not free shipping. And what happens is, is when the buyer purchases something and decides to return it, you pay for the return. And when you go to refund their money once you've received the product back, you're not required to refund their original shipping. You just paid for the return. On the flip side, if you sell an item and they decide to lie and say this item is not described, eBay's gonna force you to pay for the return and the shipping and the product price. You do the math, whatever works best for you. I choose to try to avoid the item is not uh, as described returns and uh, just uh, accept returns. We do returns at the buyer's expense. And most of the time our returns are because it doesn't fit because we do mostly clothes. But I know like on electronic products, this is more common, especially if you're buying used electronic products. Um, there are scammers out there that just take parts and then send you back the rest. I get that's very difficult to deal with. But I'm telling you right now, if in those electronics world, you're gonna get that return no matter what because they're just gonna say item not as described and say, hey, on this electronic saxophone, one of the pieces doesn't work. Whether you can confirm that it works or not, or whether or not you tested it, eBay's not gonna care. They're gonna give the buyer their money back. You might as well go ahead and do the return system so that you're not stuck with paying both the return shipping and refunding the original shipping. Now eBay says that returns actually increase sales. And I don't necessarily know if that's entirely true or how true that is, like to what degree. But I do know that buyers expect to be able to return an item and receive a refund if they're something about the item they don't like or if it doesn't work or whatever. It's just the way it's gonna go. We want people to be able to have confidence in buying online so that they continue to buy online. So do whatever we can do to make it advantageous for people to buy online and feel like it's not gonna be this drawn out process where they're gonna have to argue every time something doesn't fit right. Number five is take better photos of your products. Whatever you're selling, take the best photo you can possibly get with the widest background, cleanest background. And this is actually super easy now because uh, eBay has released the background elimination uh, tool in the app and that makes this very simple. Wide backgrounds are super important for a lot of different reasons. A, so that the buyer can see the most clear and undistracted image of your product and also because Google actually prefers the white background and white backgrounds help your items get up higher on the Google shopping search results. Six is use social media. Now I don't mean spam your Facebook account with every item on your eBay store so that your friends just tune you out completely and start you know unfriending and unfollowing you. Maybe you have an account where you show things that you find uh, on Instagram or on Twitter or on, on Facebook, maybe a Facebook page. It's not like everybody's like always on eBay like you and I are. They're on Facebook and Instagram and they're constantly scrolling through those. So figure out a way to get, let your product show up on their feed. This might mean you make a Facebook page or an Instagram account and you put your items up there and you link to your eBay store. You may also find that you actually make some direct sales without going through eBay, which can save you a lot of money on fees. Seven, cross post your items. eBay is not the only show in town. Now eBay may be the biggest show in town, but it's not the only one. We have uh, items on Etsy. Uh, we used to do Poshmark, but one of the cons of multi-platform is it's sort of hard to track and keep up with, and that may be ultimately detrimental to your business. So if you decide to cross platform, scale it. But the more exposure, the better. We take our most interesting vintage men's clothing and we put it on Grailed, and that's been pretty easy to manage, and we've achieved several thousand, many thousands at this point, dollars in extra sales, um, and actually at better prices than on eBay. Uh, they also have lower fees on some of these other platforms. Cross post your stuff. Put it on Poshmark, put it on Macari, and eBay. Warning, make sure that if you cross post, on multiple platforms that you remove those listings as soon as they've sold on one of those platforms or else you will get your business in a lot of trouble. Your job is to find a product that somebody needs. So these platforms are the bridge to those customers. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This is one of the best kept secrets in all of eBay. The best way to increase your sales 
is to sell something. Now, what do I mean by that? Of course, I don't mean you sell something, you make more money. Duh, yes, I get it. At one point, we started seeing a decline in sales, at least the number of sales. And it got frustrating, and I was wondering, how in the world are we going to increase our sales? So I tried other things, and it wasn't really going anywhere. And I was starting to realize that I had been denying all of these lower offers because I thought my product was worth so much more. Now let me remind you at this point that products are only worth what somebody's willing to pay. Sure, you can think your jacket is a $300 jacket, but if nobody pays $300, it's not worth it. The way we started was we just started taking lower offers. Now, yes, it cut into our profit margin a little bit. Yes, our average sale price may have gone down, but I'll tell you this, the volume went up and we started seeing record sales. And what you need to know about eBay's uh, search algorithm is that it rewards active eBay stores. So if you're making sales, what you'll notice is that if you make a t-shirt sale, you'll sell more t-shirts that day. Or if you sell a jacket, all of a sudden jackets seem to be on, you know, on fire for you that day. And it's because the eBay algorithm sees that you're selling those products and assumes that they must be products that are in demand and starts lifting you in the search rankings. This is what you want. This is going to get you more sales. Yes, you may accept lower prices, but you'll do higher volume and ultimately sell more stuff. Now, if you like those tips, we got more. We got more coming, and as these online platforms change and grow, the tips and tricks change and grow. We'll be back with some more soon enough, but for now, like, comment, subscribe, ask questions in the comments, check out the description for uh, links to stuff that we use to help our pro uh, business grow, and see the, the list for the brands that I was talking to you about. And that's about it, guys. We'll catch you on the next vid. Hope you guys are out there making money. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.